Hello humans, Mr. Fossil here with another project. Today we'll be doing this elephant on a piece of wood 5 mils thick, about the size of a pendant earring or a keyring. I'll be using a desktop CNC from Stepcraft, it's a D600, and we'll be using programs like Inkscape and VCarve. We have to turn the image into a DXF for VCarve to be able to use it. So open Inkscape, click on File, and open the folder where you've saved the image. So once you click open, you'll import under default import resolution. There we go. That easy. Right now, all we have to do is we're going to click on the image and highlight it and then go to uh, path and trace bitmap. Right. Once you've traced the bitmap, you go to the update box and it will show you the image that you are now tracing a bitmap of. Play with the brightness threshold to get, make it lighter or darker. Every time you make an adjustment, just remember to hit the update box and see what adjustments done. I think one more time will do. There we go. Once you've decided on it, click apply. And what I'll have done is created an image on top of the image. So left click, drag the image across, and then the bottom image that was below you need to delete. Okay. So once you've deleted that, you can put the image back onto the piece of paper. And then we're going to go to file save as and in the save as type drop down box we're going to go to dxf 12. once we've turned this let's call this um we're just going to call this elephant there we go and click save all right once we've done that you can now close your Inkscape, you don't need to save it because it's already saved it for you. Open the folder where it's saved it to, and then you'll see there's a new folder with the mural of the elephant that we're going to be changing. Okay, so let's open VCarve Desktop. Right, once that's open, you need to create a file. Now, I know that I want to make mine it's single-sided, and I'm going to go with 100 by 100 and 5 mils thick. And then I'm going to be working from the material surface or the top of the material. I always work from the center. I find it easiest. So I'll highlight the center point so that my CNC knows where it's starting from. And then we're going to do it slower just to make it more detailed. And then I'm going to be using various different woods. But I find if I use dark oak, it's quite a hard wood. So the machine's already adjusted for that. Then when you've done that, click OK. Right, now we create our sheet. We need to import the elephant. So click on import vectors and the elephant will be on your desktop or wherever you saved it. Open it. Now you'll see it, it's too big and it's in the wrong place. So what we need to do is left click and scroll all the way across the whole image and make sure it's in pink. Then go to the alignment tools and click on the center. See my images jump to the center, click closed and then select object size. So we want to change the size of it. Make sure your X and Y is linked so that the object stays proportional. Okay, we're going to be making ours 50 millimeters as we know and click apply. See my image is now shrunk. Okay, so scroll using a scroll wheel, make it bigger. Okay, if, you're, if you find your image isn't highlighted in pink, you can just left click and drag your mouse across it and it'll highlight the whole thing in pink and then what we're going to do is we're going to use the vcarve engraving tool path on this okay we're going to start depth at zero and we're going to go to a flat depth of three millimeters and i'm going to be using a v-bit rotary burr three millimeters with a 30 degree angle on it uh, that one there click on it and click select and then click calculate the machine's done it for you. To see what you've now calculated, click on preview. And using your scroll wheel and your left click, you can move your image around having a good look at it. What we still need to do is create an outer cutout to cut this image out. Because as it is now, it's just engraved. What we'll do is close that. And then we're going to go to 2D view. Click on the page that so goes black and the highlight just the part you want to cut out. Then go to profile to toolpath. 
we're going to be cutting it on the outside of that line. We don't want to cut it inside or on the line on the outside. We're starting at zero depth. We're going to five mils and we're using the same bit to engrave and to cut. Because basically it's an engraving which is two mils thicker. And click calculate. Here we go. It's calculated the new path. Let's click on preview again. And that's what it'll look like after it's been cut and engraved. You look around by left clicking and scrolling with the scroll wheel and dragging your mouse around. But if you get lost, these little icons at the top here, they'll just bring it straight back to a zero position for you so it's easy to find out where you are. Close that. Now what we need to do is give our two calculations a name so we know which one's which. The first calculation we did was, of course, the engraving. So we'll have to change the name of that. You do that by going and highlighting it, then click right click, rename and let's call this one face carving we'll call that face carving right let's do the other one again highlight it right click and uh, highlight right click and go to rename and we're going to call this one elephants cut out there we go so we can't get mixed up now we know which one's what once for carving once for the cutout once you've done that, click on this little uh, save tool path. This will open. Click on save tool path. And we're calling it face carving. Now that one's saved, highlight and tick the second option. And click on save tool path. And we're going to call that the cutout. So click save. And this is me digging through my box of exotic wood scraps. I'm going to do this elephant on five different pieces of wood, five different kinds of wood, just so that you can see how each different wood CNCs and machines. Uh, I'm not going to give you the details of which woods are what. I'll let you see if you can figure it out and I'll tell you at the end. Right here, let's get started. We'll take the first piece stick it straight into the machine you'll see that I have my draw press vise mounted on my waste board I have inset screws and uh, a whole system that I've developed myself for holding things down but for now it's just the draw press vise now that that's loaded let's open UC CNC make sure all your plugs are on you've got the little blue lights on the connector that goes on the side of your C your stepcraft unit Click load file, open the file that you've now saved. There we go. You can see this gives you the general shape of what you're going to be cutting. Um, I actually wanted to do the engraving first, so I've just swapped it to the other file. There it showed me the image, it was a double check. I'm just double checking now that I'm centered, machine's there, it's ready to go. Everything's in place. Making sure all my switches are on. And here we go. I'm going to go to the motor controller, which is that orange box there. There's an extra 500 quid, but it came with a brushless 500 watt motor. And I can control the speed using the CNC or via the box itself. Press the black button and it starts up. Just checking everything's good again, ready to go. And now we'll click cycle start. And we'll be back in about eight minutes. I believe this is going to cut. Just thought this might be interesting. It actually shows you where your CNC is on your project by turning the blue lines to yellow. Here's a close up of the machine once the cabinets open. As you can hear, there's a vast difference in audio. But that's what it looks like. And with a little bit of magic, eight minutes later, boom, we're done. CNC stopped in its uh, default position. Now all I need to do is cut the image out. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to load a file. And it's the cut file that I accidentally loaded the first time. Open it. Ready to... Oh, I've done it again. Look there. 
uh, open it. There we go. Now you can see that's cut file. And then we click start cycle. And off it goes again. I'm not going to bore you too much with the CNC, it's repetitive. Okay, so it's finished. It should have cut all the way through. It's like, oh, there we go. Perfect. Uh, I might have a fiber or two that we're still holding. Let's have a look how it looks. Get a tap. Remember, it's still full of dust. And ta da. So, after all that, I now have a file that I can cut and repeat many times over. And we'll get going on the next piece of wood. And there we go. I've cut it out five times, five different pieces of wood. Have you been able to guess which one's what? Hmm, let's see. And the reveal, there we go. Bamboo wood, ash wood, acacia wood, acacia wood, mango tree, and purple hearts. Purple hearts are very expensive. The two acacias, they're the same wood, just, just different parts of the tree that look slightly different, that's all. And there we go. This is what they look like when they've been sanded, varnished, or I use mineral oils as a finish. Next question is, what do I use them for? Should they be used for key rings, earrings, or pendants? Help me decide. Let's see in another episode what they end up being. And as always, thank you for watching. I hope you learned something. Bye-bye.